Okay, this podcast continues section two of our macromolecules unit, and this one is on proteins and enzymes. So this is our third macromolecule, a protein. So just like the other two, the carbohydrates and the lipids, proteins are organic compounds. That means they contain carbon and hydrogen. Um, proteins though, compared to carbohydrates and lipids, they have a lot of functions. Um, carbohydrates only have two, lipids mainly only have one. Proteins, however, have a few. So the functions of proteins are, they can be enzymes, and we'll learn what those are in a minute. Um, they can have defensive qualities, like if you think of your antibodies in your, in your body that fight off um, diseases and viruses and stuff like that, that those are proteins that do that. Um, storage, if you think of egg white, um, they store nutrients for the egg. Um, transport, um, some hormones are proteins and they transport throughout the blood. Hormones specifically can be another um, function. Receptors on membranes, and we'll get into that in another unit. And structure, like if you think of your muscles. Movement as well. Okay, so what is a protein? What does it look like chemically? It is composed of carbon and hydrogen, but we're gonna add two more elements to that list. It's gonna be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, kind of like carbohydrates, but it's also going to have nitrogen. Um, the monomer name for a protein is called an amino acid. Amino acids. Amino acids are composed mainly of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. There's a specific structure to that, which will be um, on the next slide. The sequence of these amino acids determines the protein's shape and shape matters and function. Um, there's 20 different amino acids. Um, they only differ in one part of their structure. And here we go. So an amino acid has this structure. You're gonna have a central carbon right in the middle. We call that the alpha carbon sometimes. Um, as we learned in section one of this unit, carbons always have four covalent bonds coming off of it. And so each of these four are different. So in an amino acid, one of those bonds is gonna be just a hydrogen. One of those bonds is gonna be a carboxyl group. C double bonded to OOH. Sometimes you'll see that they'll call it a carboxylic acid group. It's the same thing as carboxyl group. Um, over here on the left, we have an amino group. Remember that is our NH2. And then on this fourth bond is going to be some type of side chain. There is no element with a letter R. What that means is that this R can be a hydrogen. It can be a big long hydrocarbon. It could be a ring. It can be anything. And so that is what makes all the amino acids different. There are 20 amino acids and they all have an amino group. They all have a central carbon. They all have a hydrogen. They all have a carboxyl group, but this R side chain is different for each of them. So here are, I believe all of the 20 yep, um, amino acids. You got five here, five here, five here, three, and then two. And they all differ by what's highlighted, which is their R group. You can see the amino group, and don't worry about sometimes they're ionized and they have a little plus charge and they have three hydrogens instead of two. Don't worry about that. Um, they all have a hydrogen. They all have a carboxyl group and ignore that that is a negatively charged and usually we see a hydrogen there. Don't worry about that. But notice what's on the highlight. All the ones in yellow, and you're really not gonna, we're not gonna get too far into this, but all these ones in yellow are nonpolar. Okay, so they do have, these R groups is what determines what that amino acid is and does, okay? Um, the ones in the blue here, they love water, okay? Just an example. Don't worry about their names. You're not gonna have to memorize any of these. It's just a little bit crazy. We will get into amino acids later in the year, however. Um, and then you have these green ones and these, the ones that are um, ionic and the ones that have a positive charge and a negative charge. You can see the little signs on here. All right, so all 20 of these amino acids are the same at the top or on um, three of the bonds, but it's just that R group that makes them all different, okay? All right, so obviously just like lipids, just like carbohydrates, amino acids bond together to make bigger molecules and eventually we'll have a protein, all right? So if you take two amino acids, which is pictured in this diagram, and you do a condensation reaction, right? Condensation reaction, we're gonna form a bond 
between these two amino acids. And then we're going to end up with a dipeptide. They don't call it a protein yet until it's bigger. Okay. Um, so you can see it's a condensation reaction. So one of the amino acids is going to lose its OH, its hydroxyl group. One of the amino acids is going to lose its hydrogen, just like we did with carbohydrates, just like we did with the lipids to make the triglyceride. And so that water gets removed, right? That's condensation. And then we form the bond right here. So this is called a dipeptide because di means two. And we have a, a two amino acids bonded together and there's our water. And then we can do that again and again and again, and we'll have a big protein at the end. So a whole, a whole long chain, if you can see right here, of amino acids, okay? They're just, they're not showing you all the element, elements there, but that is what um, is called a protein. So proteins are chains of amino acids, but they actually fold into compact shapes. And that has to do with that R. So if you have an R group that's negatively charged and you have an R group over there that is positively charged plus a negative attract, and that causes the protein to twist and turn and make these huge globular possibly um, proteins. So another name for a big long chain of amino acids besides protein is also called polypeptide. Poly means many, peptide, meaning many proteins or amino acids bonded together. Proteins are huge, huge molecules, kind of like lipids um, and carbohydrates, actually. Um, they contain hundreds and hundreds of these amino acids. They can bend and form into different shapes, okay? So here is um, a close-up picture of that globular protein, and you can see them all like they're attracted. Some of them might be repelling each other, and that has to do with those R groups. All right, one type of protein that I want to get into just a little bit are called enzymes. Enzymes are proteins. All enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. Sorry, my dog is barking. Another dog. That's all right. So enzymes, um, what they do, let me get them outside. Hershey. Okay, we're back. Enzymes speed up reactions. They make them go faster. And they can bind to specific molecules called substrates. Um, the binding of the substrate with an enzyme causes a change in the enzyme shape. I'll show you a picture of that so you can kind of visualize what's going on here. And it makes the reaction go faster. These reactions would still happen if you didn't have the enzyme. It would just be super slow. Um, the substrate is a reactant in the reaction. And we end up with a product at the end. This binding is gonna reduce the energy needed for the reaction to occur. And that energy is called activation energy. Okay, so here's a picture that kind of explains what the heck we're talking about. This purple blob here is an enzyme, okay? Um, this enzyme has little grooves in it and that's called an active site. And so every enzyme has a different active site and they're very specific grooves that the substrate, which is a reactant in the in the um, like the, the chemical reaction, is going to fit into, and it fits into like a lock and a key, like a hand and a glove. It just fits perfectly. Enzymes are specific for their substrate, as you can see in the diagram. All right. So what happens is the substrate is going to bind to this enzyme. The enzyme kind of changes shape just a little bit, and this reaction is going to happen really fast. And this substrate is now going to be turned into two products. And notice that our enzyme is back to normal and can be reused over and over again. Um, this is a protein that does this. Okay. And that finishes up um, our protein section.